is. I know, isn't it lovely? The sun is shining and the crowds are flooding in. But don't worry if you haven't got a ticket because we have got you covered from the best gardens to the best flowers and the best take-home tips. So come on then, Angelica. Let's go and welcome to the RHS Chelsea Flower Show. Isn't it? So many different plants and varieties of flowers in here. Overwhelming, but in a good way. And I've already put my order in for some irises just behind you. She doesn't waste nope. any time, does she? That is impressive. <laughs> Now, we have got another jam-packed show for you all today. And, of course, our team of gardening gurus will be on hand every step of the way. Meeting social media and Strictly Sar, Joe Sugg, because he wants to convince us all to get off our phones and get gardening. And I totally agree with him. Oh, my goodness. I do. Just put it down. <laughs> it's that time of year when we're all heading to the garden centres and nurseries at the weekend. But while we all have those favourite plants we always go for, Marcus, is here to convince us to try something well, just that little bit different. It can feel a bit overwhelming selecting plants for your garden. But first, Angelica is here with today's very special guest. I'm pleased to welcome social media and Strictly Star and keen gardener as well, Joe Sugg. Lovely to have you here. I mean, you've caught the bug for Chelsea, third time. And this is my loving, third time. You're yeah. loving it. Do I get a free packet of seeds for my third time? Is I, that how I'll it works? I'll see if I can wangle something. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me a bit about where you grew up in Wiltshire and the impact it had on your love for gardening. Uh, so I, I grew up, I was very fortunate to grow up in a, a little tiny village called Laycock in Wiltshire. Yeah. Um, and uh, my parents were keen gardeners. Uh, my grandparents were keen gardeners. So I feel like it's slowly, as I'm getting older, it's... I'm starting to get more and more interested into the whole gardening world. And I, like I said, I was very fortunate to grow up in, in a lovely garden. Yeah. We had a pond, we had like lovely borders. A lot of time was spent on the garden. And I think it's something that, I think when I was younger, probably didn't appreciate as much because I was into things like um, football, which is the worst thing for a garden, booting yeah. balls at plants <laughs> and stuff. Sorry, mum. But now as, as I'm older, I look back and I really appreciate the fact that I did grow up in such a lovely area that had beautiful gardens. So the seed was planted and it's always been with you because even when you had a flat in London, yes. you still cared about growing and using that space. Yeah, it's quite a weird look to go into the lift in your apartment block, which is like two bags of compost on your shoulder. <laughs> but that was that was me at one point in yeah. London. And I, I was I was fortunate enough to have like little outdoor spaces that were south facing as well. So I could grow um, olive trees in, in my at, at my flat and stuff, which is really, yeah. really nice. And you understand the benefit of gardening and how it's sort of giving you some structure. And lots of people know you. I mean, I've known you for a long time now, Joe. And social media gave you the platform. Yes for your success, but you see that balance is, is vitally important. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I've been on YouTube for over 10 years now and social media and stuff. So I've, I was there right at the sort of forefront of that social media movement in a way. Um, but I think having the sort of the, the gardening seed planted early on as a child, but also like being able to go back to that, it's been super helpful for me. I, I now live in the countryside again. Yeah. And it's, uh, I can't, even though I, I've had good success through social media. I think it's all about finding that balance between using social media. Social media is great, um, but also going outside, getting in amongst nature, I think is just as important. I think it's really important that people find that balance between the two. And it can go hand in hand. Like we see people here today that are with their phones out taking pictures of the plants. It's amazing that they can sort of go home and sort of use that for inspiration and things. It's, technology is great, but find that balance between um, putting the phone down and actually going out and um, getting lost in nature and enjoying yeah. it and it, I think it's super super important for us which you do a lot now because you just said you've moved to a yes. bigger space yeah. um, tell us about the garden there uh, the garden so I'm, I'm in my third year of no mow may <laughs> which is which is great it's going well yeah. my garden is very um, it's a sloped garden it's a real challenge it's a lot to take on I think it's like just under an acre so it's a lot it's a lot of work it's for somebody it will be it will be a full-time full-time job i'm yeah. sure but it's uh I, I get out there whenever i can and I, I i i love being able to just go and disappear and plod around the garden and find 101 things that i have to go on the to-do list of things to do but it's very much a wildlife garden at the moment i've just let 
for the last sort of two, three years, I've just let things grow yeah. to try and work out what grows where. But it's... Um, so getting a, getting a vibe of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, it's a perfect day for you to be here because you're going to find out a, a help for your dilemma because you have got one. I have, yes. So what yeah. is it? I had quite a few, but the one I want to want answer today was I, I want to find out... Uh, I've got a lot of, like, sunny areas in the garden, but I've also got a lot of shady areas as well. So I want to find out the... the the best sort of combinations to put in the shady areas, best combinations for the lighter areas, and also working out height in different plants. Knowing like for a border, how do you know which plants to plant at the back? Which ones go at the front? I need a bit of help with that. I think you're going to get all the help here. I hope so. so this good is the place to go, isn't I know, it? exactly. Good luck with that. <laughs> right, this week, Toby has been helping us get the Chelsea feel at home. Today, he's looking at privacy. From fences to hedges, here's his guide to help us divide up our outdoor spaces. Very quick, easy solution, and to keep you happy. Dawn, you are a fountain of all knowledge. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love Thank it. Thank you. Now, earlier in the show, Joe Sugg was in need of some expertise to help with some tricky areas in his garden. So let's find out how he got on. Hi, Lou. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Um, I've got a bit of a gardening dilemma okay. that I need your help with. I've got a lot of light in my garden and also a lot of shade. Um, and I want to know what plant combinations I can use for both light and shade. Also, working out the height differences and knowing what to plant height-wise. Yep. It's a lot to throw at you, I'm sorry. No, no, we've definitely got some things that we can have a look at for you to see if we can find you the right thing for what you need. Wonderful. Wow, Lou, this looks incredible. I would say it, look, it reminds me of like a like an Enid Blyton pixie garden almost. This, yeah. is what, this is what I want. <laughs> well, there's a few things here that would really work well for you on your sunny border. Right. So we could look at the, the, the yeah. bascom. You want some height, so this would be your tallest plant. Yeah, well, it's taller than me. It is. <laughs> but it is, on a, it is on a bit it of a stage, a dis- so I guess. But yeah. it, it, it is quite tall. We'll come back every year for you. Okay. Obviously, yeah. this is its flowering time. Yeah, I mean, it's a real showpiece, isn't it? In it the, in, is in the border. very much so. It, definitely, yeah, at the back of the border, that would look great. And then this one, for example. This one is a fantastic is... plant, the GM Scarlet Tempest. Yes. That would, again, work really well for your sunny border. Bees love it because of the open centres. Yeah. Just keep deadheading it and it'll keep going all year. Going. Brilliant. That ticks all the boxes. I also love a bit of deadheading as well, so that's great. <laughs> Right, so we've got some really good plants here that will work for you in your shady border. I mean, first of all, this here is beautiful. What is this? This is Celine Fimbricata, and it's got these lovely frilly petals on yeah. it. It's almost like little lanterns, isn't they it? Like a little tiny lantern. And then it's quite light, so other things are mixed in really well with it. To go with that, we could add some lovely geranium uh, here. Yes. Yeah. So this will kind of weave its way in with it, and nice yeah. and bright purple to go with the white. I'm definitely um, improving because I actually recognise that. I, you've I got, thought it was a geranium, so I'm glad you said already. that. Yes, <laughs> right, I'm learning. So you could always add some of that into your sunny border because this will grow in sun as well as in shade. Right. And okay. again, another one that will come back every year. Perfect. Well, Lou, thank you so much for showing me around the, the light and the shade. I have to write down all these names of these plants, but yeah. I'm going to go away and I'm going to do that and, and uh, change my border. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Great work, Joe. Some good tips in there for everyone. Absolutely, definitely. Now, there's just a few hours left for you to vote for your winner of the BBC RHS People's Choice Award 2023. Samaritan's Listening Garden by designer Darren Hawks. The Fauna and Flora International Garden by designer Ghislaine Ricards. The Royal Entomological Society Garden by designer Tom Massey. Transcendence by designers Gavin McWilliam and Andrew Wilson. The Savile's Garden by designer Mark Gregory.
a letter from a million years past by designer Ji Hei Huang. The Nurture Landscapes Garden by designer Sarah Price. The RBC Bruin Dolphin Garden by designer Paul Hervey Brooks. The Myloma UK, a life worth living garden by designer Chris Beardshaw. Horatio's Garden by designers Charlotte Harris and Hugo Bug. The Centrepoint Garden by designer Cleve West. The Centre for Mental Health's The Balance Garden by designers John Davies and Steve Williams. Delighted to welcome Toby, it's pressures on you, <laughs> presenter and garden fanatic Gethin Jones will be with us and Carol will be facing your questions here in the clinic. And don't forget to vote for your favourite show garden before the competition closes. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.